Okay, so I'm gonna start first. I'm not gonna go and try and prove God. That's a whole different issue. I can do that if we need to, but not today. <laughs> Ask me afterwards. Um, so I think the first thing you have to understand that so God exists and God loves us. And you can see that there's the verses I put up on screen, the most famous probably, popular, is John 3.16. All of these are in NLT, New Living Translation. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Um, we'll come back to it, but it's really this concept throughout the Bible that God really loves us. It starts in Genesis when he creates us. Um, and it's throughout the Bible. And I think this is something that's important to start with when you start sharing the gospel, um, which is the good news, if you translate it. Because if you start with, hey, we're sinners, people might not want to keep talking to you because you're just <laughs> judging them right there. Um, and so God loves us and he wants to know us. He wants to have that friendship, that relationship with us. Because what's the fun in loving someone if they don't even know it? Okay, and we can come back to all the scriptures, but there's a lot, so just go through. And then I felt the second part is that we're sinners, so we're separated from God. So as much as he wants to know us, we can't really because we're dirty, we have all this baggage, and we're not holy. And so one of the best ways I could think to show this was to put, because of the law of Moses is really what condemns us, as far as Romans would put it, um, to put the law of Moses up and see, can anyone say, hey, I didn't commit any of these sins? Because I know I've done at least 50% of them, <laughs> which is kind of sad. So that's just something to think about. So it's like not having other gods, not having idols, not misusing the name of God, like saying, oh my God, if you think about it. Um, Observing the Sabbath, resting on Saturdays, um, honoring your father and mother, not murdering, not committing adultery, not stealing, not false, not lying, um, and not coveting or wanting what others have. Um, so these are all just the 10. There's so many more things that we can do more that's considered sin. But sometimes like my problem was, I was like, I'm a pretty good person. I'm not stealing on the regular basis or causing major trouble. That's cool. Like, I'm pretty good. But the thing is, if you think about it, like, I've lied, right? Just being honest here. Um, lying and murder are on the same list. Like, if you think about them, the punishment is equal for this too. And so even if I'm a pretty good person, I'm not fully good. I'm not holy. And so that's the thing that's separating us from God. And here's more verses. And then I'm going to hope that this thing doesn't move while I do it. So there's a picture. You draw it like this. God's up here. And then we're all the way down here at the bottom where you probably cannot even see it. We're separated by the absence. You see the big gap? And a lot of times we feel like we'll try and do stuff here. We'll be nice people and all sorts of other things, try and be perfect in our work or do a good job. Are any of them getting us to God? Is there anything you can think of that can get you to God? In my mind, no. And as far as the Bible says, no. Um, and so we have sin that's sending us to death. Um, and we're, we're just falling short of God. Like we can't reach him. We're separated from him. And so we can't have that friendship that we want. And it's honestly, we feel it in like how unhappy we can be 
in how the arguments we get in with friends and family, um, and in just our actions, there's things we're like, oh, I regret that I did that. Um, that's something we really feel. But thankfully, God still wants to know us. Um, he knows that we can't be perfect. He knows we're filled with sin. And so he was trying throughout the Bible to make a plan for that. Is how can I know these people? How can I wash the mud away from them? And so he came up with a plan. And then this is, again, something where you probably need more context. And that's also a, probably another like conversation because it's like if you don't believe Jesus or you don't fully understand what happened as far as the sacrifice, because God came down as Jesus, um, but he's also his son. And so Jesus is this perfect person. And he dies in our place on a cross. Um, and the amazing thing about it is it's like all explained throughout the Bible and predicted before it happens. And then once Jesus dies, he rises again. Um, three days later, and people see that. So it's all these things to support the prophecies because Jesus, God's been planning this throughout the whole Bible, this, this solution to our sin. And then if we look at this diagram again, I realized yesterday that I don't really know how to draw a cross. <laughs> so Jesus is the bridge between them because we can't bridge that gap ourselves. And that's something I think about like with this, Jesus has died already. He died while we were sinners. There was nothing we could really do to deserve it. Um, but he's dead, right? Do we accept that death? Do we leave it? Do we say, hey, that's another day's problem. I don't really want to know you today, God. Um, that's something we can sort of, we have the choice to accept this opportunity to know God because we can't really know him without Jesus. Um, and how do we do this? Probably gonna have to erase my picture now. <laughs> Um, so keep thinking about that um, but you have to accept that's really what you have to do is you have to accept Jesus' sacrifice um, and so we have this first verse in John but to all who believed him and accepted him he gave the right to become children of God so it really allows us to come into this relationship with God um but it's also a key that you don't think of it, hey, I'm saving myself. I did something to be saved because that's not something we can do. We didn't do anything to deserve that. But salvation is not a reward. God's done it for us. Um, and this Revelation verse, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. So all we have to do is respond and open our hearts to Jesus. And so what this involves is us turning away from ourselves, us, our belief that we're good enough on our own, we can do it all by ourselves, and turning to God and saying, hey, I believe that you died for me and that you want to know me and that you love us, and turning around and approaching God and saying, God, Please come into my life and change me. Um, and something to understand about this, this is not just an emotional moment. And it's also not an intellectual moment. It's not just, okay, I know God exists. I know he's done this for me. Do you want God to come into your life? Do you want to know him? And then I think I left the next slide blank so I could draw more pictures. <laughs> So there's sort of three, three circles, three different types of people. So on the first one, 
you have a chair or an age or a throne with yourself on it. And Jesus with the cross is here, right? That's one option. Another option that some, that's once you've accepted Christ in, you can still be on the throne. And Jesus can be right there. Or there's this option with Jesus on the throne and us down here serving him. Yeah. And that's sort of a choice you have to make because yes, you can start like as a new believer, that's where you would start. But a lot of times we're like, okay, God exists, but I'm just gonna be in control of my life, not fully repented to what it is. And so that ends up happening. That's when your life's not run by God. And then there's the other one where you're fully surrendered to God. And I'm gonna let Jason take pictures quickly. Um, and that's really something you have to know. It's like, what do I want to do? Because it's a very different life, depending which one you pick. Um, really something that can change. And I can always go back at the end if there's any scriptures and stuff to go. But then the next thing I'm going to do is just walk you through a prayer that you can accept Jesus but it's also something you can pray with others um, as a first time. So. Okay. We should really get a whiteboard to fix it for you here. <laughs> okay, next slide. Um, so this is just a prayer. I'm gonna pray it. You can pray with me, but the important thing is what matters is what's going on in your heart because God does know everything. He is God. Um, so he knows. Speak genuinely to God. If you pray out loud, if you pray in your heart, either one is welcome. Okay. Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. Thank you for dying on the cross to pay for my sin. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins and giving me eternal life. Take control of the throne of my life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Amen. You can keep praying if you want. Not exactly sure what the next slide is. Um, so here's something. If you're not sure, after all I've said, what what is the basis of this faith? Um, how can you know that you've actually been saved if you've accepted Jesus into your heart? Um, is John one John five verse six to twelve, and God has testified testified about his. So, so we go through by the water, by the blood, and by the spirit, but then there's also God. Um, and so we can believe the salvation that he offers us. We can believe that he's not just lying to us um, and fooling us. Um, and this is what God has just testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. So it's in Jesus that we have this opportunity. So whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have God's son does not have life. And then also back to that Revelation 3.20 with accepting, opening the door to Jesus. He says he'll come in if we open the door. Um, and so we're promised eternal life if we've accepted him. And then there's another thing that I thought would be really helpful is this image of an airplane. Sometimes we don't feel like we're, sa we're saved. Um, everything's just a disaster. We're a terrible person and everything's going wrong. Like, how can you know that you're saved? And so the best way to think about this is of an airplane. 
If you get on an airplane and you think, oh no, this pilot is gonna crash. The plane's bad, the pilot's gonna crash. You're gonna have a miserable flight because you're gonna be scared the whole flight. Um, whereas does the pilot actually get affected by your negative thinking? No, the pilot's still gonna fly the plane. The plane is still gonna fly. And so if you're going based on feelings, some days you're going to feel terrible and you're not going to believe it, but the faith is what's going to, faith in Jesus is what's got you saved. So God's already working and you just have to place your trust in him and know that, yes, it might not feel like it today, but God still got you, still carrying you. Um, and then these verses all have, these, I don't know what points, all have scriptures related to them. I was just running out of time to add them. Um, but the scriptures I can give you, they're also on the app that I'll tell you about just now. Um, so here's what's happened once you've accepted Christ into your life. So you've come into your life. Your sins were forgiven. You became a child of God. You received eternal life. You began the great adventure for which God created you. And you have that opportunity to know God personally. And so now I can, words. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the next slide, um, which it was actually very funny on the app. There's two ones. There's for spiritual laws and there's getting to know God personally. And so they have two different analogies using the same word growth. They use different words for each one. Um, so the first one is get to know God. And this is done through reading the Bible because that's his word. That's often how he'll talk. And the second one is responding in prayer, praying and talking to God because that's your opportunity to talk back to God. Um, and you will often talk in so many different ways. And you, you'll know it when he talks. <laughs> um, the next one is to obey. Um, do what he's telling you. If he's convicting you of something, then I'd suggest you do it because it's not a nice feeling being convicted by God. Um, and then walk in faith. Just keep trusting God with what's happening, um, with what he's telling you. T is tell others, um, sharing that faith, because if it's something that's truly changed your life, it is also something you're going to want to see those people around you knowing God. Slow down. Just keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try and keep reading. Um, and then H, have fellowship. Um, this is really, go to a church. The remnant, as much as we love fellowshipping with you, we cannot take the place of an actual church. None of us are qualified preachers or theologians. Um, all of our knowledge comes from reading the word, hearing other people preaching, um, and really seeking God. But there's a lot more that a church can offer you, um, the support during the week. There's so much more and just so much growth when you're involved in a church. It's really something we recommend. We cannot replace the church. We're in addition to the church. Um, and then again, our walk depends on what we allow God to do in us, not what we do. Because our own actions only get us so far. Um, so that's... Might be the last slide. Oh, my personal addition. Okay, so... The Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, it's like one of the most quoted scriptures, I feel. And it's always in response to some human problem, like corruption, oh, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that really frustrates me because it misses the whole rest. The next three verses are really actually summarize the gospel. And that's something that you see a lot throughout the Bible is the gospel, this good news that I just shared. Um, and so I thought this was a good way to summarize it and remember it. And if you need to talk about it to someone, 
and you don't have the God Tools app, you don't have the book, you don't have what I just told you, here's one way to see, put it there, and you can kind of read it to someone. And even a conversation started, sometimes like if someone says that, <laughs> you can just start it and see, see what they say. Um, so it starts with the four, everyone has sinned, we all short, fall short of God's glorious standard. That's that whole concept of we're sinners. Um, we can't avoid that. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. That's, there's God's love. There's the whole fact that he sent his son. It wasn't something we earned, couldn't deserve it, couldn't do it. Um, he did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. He stood in our place. Um, he gave us that opportunity to connect with us. Um, and people are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead, this whole plan that God wanted to know us throughout the Bible, throughout time. He's always wanted to know us. Um, and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for his, he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. And that's that salvational message, when you believe. So all it requires is that you believe, and you keep seeking God. No moment but I'm pretty sure this is the last slide and sort of where I get to end. But I'd like to end in prayer. Um, and then we're all sort of free to come as we go um, to talk about these things. Um, and so as I mentioned, this is on the God Tools app. I can give you more connections to that. I can give you a link, whatever works. Um, so I'm going to just pray. God, thank you that we could all come here today um, to hear your word, to seek you, to seek to know you. I pray that we'll really seek you out in our lives, um, come to know you deeply, um, that this gospel is just part of our everyday life, um, something so common to us, um, something that we sometimes fail to appreciate. Thank you for your gifts, um, that you've made it so easy for us to come to know you, but it's something we so many people are missing, God. Help us to really come to know you personally, um, and just to believe in you. Um, we repent of any sins we've done, um, our self-drivenness and self-centeredness, um, our infliction of pain on others, and all the sins we commit, God, we commit them to you and ask you to forgive us, but also to help us each day to draw closer to you and f go further away from sin. Amen. So if you guys want to talk back to me while I speak, that's completely okay. Um, I'm not going to be speaking for too long because, you know, Monica did literally all the heavy lifting. But, <laughs> so yeah, it's one more time for Monica. Um, so I just want to, first of all, thank you all for coming. This was obviously amazing. But second thing I want to do, um, and this is kind of the most important thing, is let you guys know that if you need prayer and if you need intercession, we're all here for you. Um, you know, I'm not going to, like, I don't think we have time for an official off, off bed altar call, but if you do need prayer, um, you can speak to me or you can speak to Monica afterwards. Um, I prefer to pray guys with guys and girls with girls, but if you feel more comfortable talking to Monica, um, she'll get you connected just as well. Um, second thing, or I guess besides that, we got more snacks, so can we praise God for that? Like, that is pretty cool. And um, most importantly, just to reaffirm what Monica is saying. You know, God really has a passion for you. And, you know, we always, you, have you guys heard that song, Reckless Love? Oh, the overwhelming never. You, have, you guys all heard that? Yeah. All right, if you haven't heard it, we're going to listen to that one of these days, all right? Like, maybe, like, tomorrow, like, next week we'll put it on. Maybe during worship, you know, Mondays. Yeah. Yeah, totally not booked. <laughs> 
on Mondays, maybe we'll play it. Uh, like, but the thing is that God's love is just like it's just so reckless. Like He doesn't care. Like He doesn't. He really just didn't care. Like even though you're going to continue to sin, even though you're going to continue to fail, because as it says here, all people have fallen short of the glory of God. God doesn't care. He's going to continue to love you. He's going to continue to embrace you. So I want you to to know um, when you leave here and be. This is what I want you to be encouraged about: is that even though we failed as humans, even though we failed as God's creations, and even though we've been held to this standard, all we can do right now is this. God doesn't care. He still loves you. He still wants to hold you and embrace you because he is more than just a God. He's your father. And he's a good one at that. So with that being said, um, does, does, does anyone need prayer? Um, just like, I don't know. How do you guys want to do this? Can we just close our eyes real quick? Everyone just close our eyes real quick. Bow your heads. Um, you know, God is really moving in this place and I don't want anyone to miss this moment. You know, um, we live our whole lives trying to please ourselves. And then when Christ finally knocked on the door, we, we decided, God, I don't care about my life anymore. I'm going to start living for you. And that's the, that's the response that God wants from us. So church, I just want to ask if anyone needs prayer in this moment, if anyone feels like they've been going the wrong direction, or maybe they're still sitting on the throne, or maybe even, even on the other end of that, you haven't even given God the throne, like you haven't even invited him into your life yet. If you feel like that you're still missing that genuine last relationship where Jesus is sitting on that throne, can you just raise your hand right now? But no eyes looking, no one looking around. If you need prayer right now, the Holy Spirit's going to convict you. I just want you to raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I see you. So um, what I'm going to do, you guys can look back up here. What I'm going to do is if you need um, prayer, I, I saw you, I understand, and um, I don't know if you want to do it publicly or if you want to do it privately, but either way, um, I'm going to open up, like, I, I'm going to kind of set us free, and if we need to, we can go into, like, maybe, like, the back room, or we can do it over there in the corner uh, while everyone leaves, but I just want you to know that God loves you so dearly, and even though you failed, and even though you feel like you're on the wrong pace right now, it doesn't have to stay that way, because there's redemption in the cross, there is love in the cross. And the whole reason, if God didn't want you to come back to this moment, he wouldn't have given you the cross, but he did. And he died knowing that you were going to be in this very moment. Because God knows the future, and he knows what you've done, and he still has chosen to love you, even though that happened. So with that being said, um, I'm just going to pray one more time, and then after that, we can, um, you guys can go. I'm pretty sure it's almost four, if not. It's, and then you guys can grab snacks. It will be great. But anyways, just one more time, bow your head, close your eyes. Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you're doing right now. We thank you that even though our life has been in a repetitive cycle of failure, my God, Lord, you still stand in on Calvary and you are ready to see us succeed, my God. Lord, your word says that we move from glory to glory, my God. So, Lord, we want to see your glory. We want to see you pick us up, my God. We want to we want to feel your warm hands on our on us, my God, lifting us up, encouraging us to do better, encouraging us to continue pressing forward, my God. Because Lord, without you, we we have nothing. We have no strength in our own selves to continue pushing forward my God. But every single time we've tried to change by our own hands, my God, we failed. But when you walk into the scene, everything changes. So God, right now I pray that every single person leaves encouraged, every single person leaves ready to, to build something new, to restore their foundations, to allow the fire to come and burn up everything that needs to leave. God, I pray that every single demonic spirit, my God, begins to feel uncomfortable and flees in the midst of the night. I have heard that family issues begin to dissolve overnight, my God, that even though even in the course of months, my God, that these the family relationships, my God, can just get back together, my God, that you, that you take the seven relationships, my God, and heal them in the name of Jesus, my God. Lord, I pray if there's any un unspoken healing that's needed in this place, my God, Lord, that on the way out of that door, they begin to feel better. I got the outside of that. As soon as they walk out of this door, my God, they're like, woo, I feel a little bit better in my arm. I feel a little bit better in my shoulder. Amen. Hallelujah. Like, I want, to, I just got to let your glory be revealed through what happens tonight, my God. Because tonight, this wasn't our meeting. This was not the remnant. This was all for you, Jesus. So Lord, thank you for moving in this place, my God. We love you. We bless you. We honor you with everything that we have, my God. So it's in your name that we pray, and it's by your blood that we plead. Amen and hallelujah. Thank you for coming today.